people. Thank you for tuning in with us here at the Cornerstone Borneo. We trust that you're going to have such a great service with us. And so if you're ready to praise the Lord, why don't you get up on your feet and let's roll. your feet and let's give him a mighty praise offering. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
Jesus, another mighty roar of praise. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Sing your praises. darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt
praise you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the Spirit. Oh, we heal you, King. We heal your majesty. Jesus is king in this place. To lift high his banner, lift high his majesty. There's no like, there's no king like him till today.
a time as this because we know who is backing us up we know that our God is the King of Kings and the Lord of all Lords 
And that this morning we can stand knowing who we are in the Father, who we are in the Son, who we are in the Holy Spirit. And so I just commit the rest of the service into your hands. We just pray for your presence, Lord, to bring such an encouragement and such a refreshing through your word this morning into every heart and into every spirit. We bless you, God, to your name. We give all the praise and all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' precious name. And every one of God's people say, Amen, Amen. Just go ahead and give Jesus another praise offering this morning. He's worthy, He's worthy. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning, church. Welcome to Cornerstone Borneo online service today. We are so glad that you can join all of us here. And my name is Kev. I'm Ewan, and we're glad to be here with you this morning. Before you take your seat, why not you turn to your neighbor and tell them, you look beautiful today. Or if you're watching this by yourself, you can say, thank you, Abba, for you have made me beautiful. Amen? Amen. If this is your first time joining our service today, we want to give a special, special shout out to you. And we hope you will enjoy our service and be blessed by the word today. Um, today, our speaker is none other than our own pastor, Pastor Rachel. She's beautiful inside out and she has been such a blessing to all of us in Cornerstone family. Yes, let us prepare our hearts to receive the word of God this morning. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God here in Greek is the word rhema, and rhema is the spoken word of God. That means as we hear of the word of God that is spoken forth, that is preached, faith comes. So today, we pray that for all of you who are tuned in with us, that you will also receive the rhema word from God that is for you. Amen? With that, let's set our hearts to hear and to receive from the Lord as Pastor Rachel delivers her message. Good morning, Church Online. Welcome back to church. So good to have you join with us this morning. We're going to go right into the Word today. Are you ready? Amen? Amen. You know, guys, we are only three weeks away to 2021. My goodness. Three weeks away! Ah! So fast, right? And yet so very slow as well. Um, th today, I just want to speak on a very simple word, very foundational, but so simple and yet, not many of us do it on a daily basis, okay? It's something that has brought us through 2020. It is something that has given us hope in a time where it is hopeless. It's something that has given us vision in a time where, where vision is bleak, amen? And, and what it is, what it is, is the Word of God. Today, I want to talk about the Word of God, you know, and I've entitled my message, Word, Word Up. Okay, it's, it's a young people's slang. <laughs> you don't know what it means to the uncles and aunties and myself as well. Um, Urban Dictionary says, word is the shortened word from the phrase, my word is my bond. The longer phrase was shortened to, the, to word is bond and then until it just became word. So young people use it as a phrase to basically mean truth or speak truth. Or so when someone says like, Rachel's so pretty, and then you'd say, word. I know. Okay, anyway, I'm sure you're in agreement with that. But uh, even as we go into 2021, you know, we must go strong, amen? And, and I really want to emphasize on this, that we got to continue to be in the Word of God. we got to be strong in the Word of God. we got to learn how to love the Word of God, how to learn the Word of God, and how to live in the Word of God. You know, a few weeks ago, um, we, we had the Warfare series, all right? If you haven't tuned into our Warfare series, go for it, man. I think it's one of the best series we had this year. We had a lot of good series this year, huh? Uh, but the Warfare series, uh, Pastor Sebi, in the last week, last part, um, she talked about picking up our weapons of warfare. She talked about the three weapons we're going to carry, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, and the sword of the Spirit, all right? The last one is the sword of the Spirit. And, and, and you know what? She, she said something that really struck a chord with me. The sword of the Spirit is the only weapon that you use as an offense, as an offensive weapon. 
the helmet and the, and the shield, you know, you can't exactly use a helmet to kill someone. Okay, maybe you can, lie, you know, it's if it depends how hard it is, you chuck it in their face or something. Um, but, you know, it's, it's really not going to go very far. And so the only offensive weapon that the Lord has given us is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That's this. Amen. And because the Word of God is a weapon, like any other weapon, we got to learn how to use it. Amen. We must train ourselves to be able to fight with it. Amen. Amen. And, 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 it's, and although you may have it, training with it is important. Okay. And other thing that happened this year, we had an invited speaker, um, Pastor Benny Ho. We, we had a lot of good invited speakers this year. The best thing, we didn't even have to fly them in. <laughs> no, actually, that's the saddest thing. But um, Pastor Benny Ho spoke on a message called Revival Come. Do you guys remember that? And he talked about how uh, for revival to come, we must be a church that is strong in the spirit and also strong in the Word of God. Amen. And I totally agree with him, 100%. You know, I, I was just amening uh, when, when, when he was preaching. And the Word of God, there must come a great balance between the Word of God, between the, the Spirit and the Word, okay? And the thing is, it, the church is almost like a divorce between the Spirit and the Word. And you can tell when you go into a church, whether a church is more spirit church or the church is more word church, you know? And, and, and many times you can tell because either one is strong in the spirit and then lacks the word, or is strong in the word but lacks the spirit. For revival to come, there needs to come a remarriage of the word and the spirit. Amen. Remarriage of the word and the spirit. And the higher we go in the spirit, the deeper we got to go in the word of God. It's like flying a kite. The higher you fly the kite in the sky, the stronger you're going to pull down the, the gravity of the, of the string onto the ground. Amen. And the higher you fly in the Spirit of God, the deeper you must be rooted in the Word of God. Amen. And so today, I, this is really what I want to speak about, is to go and to encourage us and to admonish us to go deeper into the Word of God. Um, a few weeks ago, we talked about the Greek word of the word word. There were three things that Pastor Sebi said, right? Graphe, the book itself. It is, it is the book itself. And so there are three words of the word word in Greek. One is the book itself. Logos is the written word. It is the message that is written within the book, right? And then the third word for word is rema, the spoken word and the living word of God. It is the utterance of God. It is the declaration of God. It is that revelation you have. You know, when you're reading the word of God, there is a revelation that comes um, into your heart. Or like when you're listening to a sermon and, 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 and sometimes beyond what the pa pastor or the preacher is saying, something clicks within your spirit and you're like, oh, oh, it's like that time when this had happened. Oh, it's like that time when the Holy Spirit said this to me, right? So that's the Rema Word of God. And just as we need a balance between the Spirit and the Word, we also need a balance that the greater we go into the Rema, the greater we're going to go into the Logos Word of God. Because there are many people who just jump from conference to conference. You know, they go from... Uh, they follow after speakers and, and they just want to know what's the latest prophet saying, what is he saying about 2020, and, 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 and they're, they're, the foundations of their life has to do with prophecies, you know, and so I've met a lot of these people, and a lot of times they say, hey, do you hear what the prophets say? Do you know what the prophet said about this year, and what, what's going on, and things like that? Hey, look, I'm all about um, prophecy, okay? I, I'm, I, I truly believe that you will receive a prophet's reward if you would listen to the prophet. But our foundation, Christian life, cannot be based on prophecies. Amen. It must be based continuously on the Logos Word of God. It is what, um, it is, it is what will sustain our Christian life. The Logos Word of God is what will sustain our Christian life. It will be a folly and a danger to us if we neglect reading the pure Logos Word of God. Amen. I just want to emphasize, we've got to get into our Bible. You see, many of us want a word from God, but we don't want to read the Word of God. Uh, we, 
We don't make time for it. We think, ah, yeah, it's okay lah. I mean, I heard the pastor preach last Sunday. I felt so refreshed. I felt so full. I felt so energized. I think that's good enough. I tell you, it's not good enough. Amen? Uh, if, if, if sermons are like vitamins, you, ca- you cannot live on just vitamins. Vitamins are good. It gives you um, immunity and all those things. But you need to eat real food food. Amen. Get into your steak. Get into your rice. Get into the protein. Get into everything that the Word of God has to offer. Amen. I just want to share that, you know, in 2015, I was a student at the Bible College of Wales. I was the first batch of students um, at the Bible College of Wales since the reopening. And, you know, Wales is known for revival. It, 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 had, it, had, it was the nation that went through revival in the 19, early 1920s, 1910. Um, and when I was there, I was just praying. And I was just like, God, I need a breakthrough. I really want to see angels or manifestation of angels. I want, could you just let someone pray for me and, and, and where, where things will just go bang and things will change, you know. I was really praying for a supernatural breakthrough. After the first month went by, I was just like, oh my gosh, I haven't had this breakthrough yet. I became very desperate. I started to uh, fast. I, 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 I took um, three days in a week to just fast. And by the second month, I, nothing happened. No angel, no, fe- no feather of an angel. But something changed inside me. At the end of, those, at the end of those, the time I was in Bible school, okay, every day being in the Word of God, it changed me. Uh, something just shifted inside me. I mean, not that I wasn't in the Word before, but now I was so joyful. I enjoyed being the Word of God. I started to love reading the Word of God because every time I was in the Word of God, it will, it will become so real. It was so meaty, you know. Um, and and, and, and I, I love the Word of God. I learned the Word of God for the time I was there, and when I, con- when I lived out the Word of God, it just became more and more real to me. You know, I became so full, and at the end of it, I realized I didn't need um, those supernatural things which I desired. I was just so full um, after my time in Bible school, you know, and it was at this time that something came as a revelation. It just clicked in my spirit, and the Lord said, Rach, before the revival of my spirit, must come the revival of the Word. Before the revival of my spirit must come the revival of the Word. You know, that's something that really gripped my heart. I came back to Mary and and I, that's something that I don't stop doing. Just being in the Word of God daily has changed my life tremendously. In John chapter 1, it says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word is God. And then a few verses down, it says, And the Word became flesh. And who is that Word that became flesh? It's Jesus Christ, right? And so in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. The Word is God. And then the Word became flesh. And then so here is Jesus. Jesus is born, okay? And you would think, Jesus, who this book is about, who this book is talking about. It's revealing. It's everything about him and that's what he's going to do. Jesus himself had to read the Word of God. You know the story when he was 12 12 years old, right? Jesus was 12 years old and his parents couldn't find him. They were looking for him everywhere. And when they found him, he was at the synagogue. And, And what was he doing there? He was reading the Word of God. He was listening to the, the, the teachers teach. He was learning the Word of God. And when his parents asked him, he said, I must be about my father's business. What is that business that he must be? You see, Jesus, even as a young child, is trying to tell us something already, that the, your main business with the Father and in the Father's house is actually being in the Word of God. Amen. And so whether you are a preacher or worship leader in this house, whether you're a cell leader or a cell member, and even if you are a businessman, a teacher, an engineer, everything that we do, we do unto the Lord. Amen? Everything that we do, we do to Him. We are serving Him. And the foundation and the beginning of your business should be the Word of God. 
The problem is that many of us do everything else first and we think, okay, the Word of God will only come later. <coughs> the, the Word of God, when I have time, and then I'll get into the Word of God. <coughs> but what if I told you that your business will be better if you started with the Word of God? Your relationships will be better if you started with the Word of God. This is our main business, the business of our Father is to be in the Word of God, even as Jesus said. Amen. And if Jesus, the Son of God, the one in which this is all about, He reads the Word of God as He grew up, what more to say you, what more to say me? All of us should be in the Word of God. Amen. How can we have an outpouring of the Spirit if we don't know who He is? And how can we know who He is if we don't know His Word? Everything that we have to know about God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit is in here. And for us to cry out and say, God, pour out your Spirit. May every knee bow, may every tongue confess that you are Lord. Bring transformation to this land. Bring reformation to this nation. You know, we pray really audacious, crazy prayers for Jesus. But if we don't know who we are praying to or what we are praying towards, then our prayers don't have power. we got to get into the first business, and that's getting into the Word of God. Amen? Make that your priority today. Now, I'm just going to give us four points about the power of the Word, and then after that, I'm going to give us four functions of the Word of God, and then I'll give us some practical tools, and we'll close, all right? But I really just want us to understand what it means to get into the Word of God and the power behind it. Your life will be changed if you continue to be in the Word of God, love it, learn it, and live it. Amen. The power of the Word. Number one, it has the power to cleanse. Someone say cleanse. That's right. It has the power to cleanse. And just as you take a bath or a shower every day, you know, because you go out, through your, you, you go through your daily life and... We get dirty, whether through sweat or through the dirt and the air and things like that. You've got to have your shower every day. I hope you have your shower every day. Please tell me you have your shower every day, okay? And just like you have your shower every day from the stuff that you go through out your day, have, you need, your spiritual man needs also a shower every day because our spirit man also gets contaminated and polluted by the things that we, we see, um, the, the, the polluted by what enters our eye gate, polluted by what enters our ear gate, through social media, the stuff we read, through conversations with our friends. You know, our spirit man gets tainted throughout the day. It may not be evil, all right? The conversations you have with your friend and the things you see on social media or the news that you read, it may not be evil. It, it may just be, you know, mediocre, gray. It's just dirt, okay? It's basically, it's clutter. So, but at the end of the day, we do need to wash our spirit, spirit man, amen? And we do that through the Word of God. Ephesians chapter 5, 25 to 26, it says, Husband, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the Word. Wow. You know, Jesus is our groom. He's our groom. He's our husband. He, he wash, washes over us. He watches over us, over us and He also washes over us through the Word of God. Washing of water by the Word. There is only one way to keep clean, our spirit man clean, is to take frequent baths in the Word of God. Amen. And, that's, and just as you bath first thing in the morning, last thing in the evening, you do that with the Word of God. Make time to read the Word. The first thing you do when you wake up and before you go to sleep, just meditate on the Word of God. As you close your eyes, just continue to meditate. Your dreams will, will be uh, more about Him and less about all the nonsense you've been thinking about. But as you do that, you know, it brings a cleansing over your mind and over your thoughts. Psalms 119 verse 9, 9 it says, How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. Can someone say taking heed? Taking heed according to your word, okay? Um, to be cleansed completely is to put the word in effect. It's one thing to read. It's another thing to actually act it out. And that's where true, it, that's where that, that, that cleansing 
um, will come forth. We've got to take heed to the word. In James chapter 1, it puts it this way, you know, we've got to be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Not just hearers, hearing it and not doing it. And in James chapter 1, it also talks about how the one who is only a hearer but not a doer is like one who goes to the mirror. He, he looks at himself and then he leaves forgetting how he looks like. You know, the Bible is like a mirror. That's what it's talking about. And, and what, what's the use of a mirror? A mirror is used as a reflection for you to take a look at yourself. And then you have a mental image in your mind as to how you want to look, right? And so with that mental image in your mind, you look at yourself in the reflection that you see in a mirror, and then you will adjust yourself accordingly to the standard in which you want yourself to look like in your mind, right? And so when you look in the mirror, if your hair is messy, okay, girls, is my hair messy? My hair is always messy in camera. All right, you look into the mirror, and as you do, you will adjust yourself, okay, as to how you want to look like. That's what a mirror is for. And in the same way, that's how the Bible works. It's so cool. The Bible works like a mirror. That as you read it, there is a standard that the Lord wants you to look like, and that's Him, right? To look like Jesus. There's a standard in which He has given you into your heart, and into your mind, in which you know that God's calling all of us to live by. And as you have that understanding of that standard of who you are meant to be, you look at yourself in the mirror, and if it doesn't reach the few things you can tweak, okay? Tweak. Tweak your character. Tweak that anger. Tweak that resentment that you carry. Tweak that jealousy, that envy that you may have. All, all our, um, our insecurities. Tweak all those fears. Remove some things. Clean some things. And like a mirror, you remember how you look like. And you walk away. Not just being a hearer of the word, but doer of the word. You know, the word of God is like good enzymes. The more you partake of it, good enzymes are working inside of you. It has rejuvenating qualities, okay? It can rejuvenate you from inside out. You know, it's, it's really, really powerful if you would just memorize scriptures and carry it with you throughout your day. I promise you, your life will change. And I know many of you have already experienced this because it is the Word of God that is true. Amen. It is the Word of God has promises and has the power to cleanse us. Let's move on. Are you ready? Number two. The power of the word, it has the power to make one wise. In Psalms 119, verses 130, it says this, The entrance of your words give light. It gives understanding to the simple. You know, the, power, the word of God, it, it can make one really, really wise. You know, in James, it talks about there's, there's earthly wisdom and then there's heavenly wisdom. And so God wants us to have heavenly wisdom, to not just have wisdom of the earth. Look, if you want to know more about God and the God of the universe, all right, get in the Word. It's, this is all about Him. If you want to know more about yourself, get in the Word. This is all about you too. You know, in, in the Word of God, there are business strategies. There are friendship management. Read the book of Proverbs. L read the stories about friends, okay? Friendship management. There's marriage counseling wisdom from the Word of God as well. It even talks about how much money to invest, how much money to keep. It even talks about food for us to eat, what kind of food we should eat and what food we should abstain from, you know. I mean, look at Deuteronomy. These people had the foundation of very, very particular things on how to live life. You want wisdom? Everything is in here. Amen. This Bible contains the wisdom of King Solomon, it, what he began with. King Solomon is the wisest king that ever lived, even as the Bible says. And he started with a measure of wisdom. And most of the things that he learned about wisdom came from the Word of God. And in the Word of God today, what we have is King Solomon's wisdom that he has expounded, uh, that, that he has just even elaborated from what he has already known. That's given to us in the book of Proverbs. 
book of Proverbs. Let me teach you a few tricks about reading the word. You know, sometimes I, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, have, I'll have three bookmarks, you know. I have three bookmarks in, in my Bible, one, and another one here, two. Look at my Bible, man. You know what they say? Dirty Bible, clean Christian. <laughs> clean Bible, dirty Christian. So how dirty is your Bible? My, my, my Bible is pretty dirty, right? But anyway, I've got three bookmarks. One in Psalms, another one in Proverbs, okay? Because Psalms connects us with, the, with our emotions. And, and, and Proverbs connects us with the intellect of God, all right? And then I have another one in a, in a Bible study that I'm doing. Right now, I'm going through the Gospels, okay? And so I've got three bookmarks here in, in three different places. And every day, I read something from the Psalms, I read something from Proverbs, and I read something from where I'm doing a Bible study in. And that's how you can grow in wisdom, just by being in the Bible every day of your life. Amen. Now, you know, there are three interesting facts about the Bible. I'm just going to give them to you. Three interesting facts. There are over 100 million copies of the Bible that are sold annually. Do you know how many books that are, there are? That's a lot. Okay, 100 million copies of the Bible are sold annually. The second thing is it got into the 1995 Guinness World Record for selling 5 billion copies. There have been 5 billion copies of the Bible sold. This is the most sold and read book in the world and in the centuries that has lived in the generations. This book is the most sold book in the world. That's crazy, right? And the last thing is this, the Bible is the most commonly stolen book across the globe. <laughs> it's the most commonly stolen book across the globe, you know. There are some nations, especially communist nations, they won't allow the Bible to, to be read in, in their nation. There are people, okay, there are so many stories of how there are people who have laid down their lives and they have actually died to bring Bibles into a nation like China. You know, in China, the people who memorize the Bible, they memorize it word by word because they know that if ever they, they're, they're, they are found out, if any government officials find their Bible, they're going to take it, they're going to throw it, and they're going to burn it, right? So what's left is only what they know in their mind and in their heart. And so they memorize it, you know, and that's how precious the Word of God is. But for you and I, we have the privilege and the honor to have the Word of God. I mean, thank God for this nation who allows us to have the Word of God, who allows us to have the Bible in our homes and in our rooms. But what is it doing? It's collecting dust, lah. Right. Come on, I know this. We know this. It's probably somewhere in your room. You think that the closer it is to you, the more physically close it is to you, the more it will. No, that's not how it works, okay? <laughs> How do you get this thing inside of you? Read it. Don't let it collect dust. Okay, you can't sleep on it and think it will come inside of you. Amen? The Word of God must be read. There are people who, who would die to have the Word, the Bible in their hands. You know what? You know who actually believes that the Word of God is powerful? Even the communists believe that the Word of God is powerful. They believe it so much they don't want their people to have it. There must be a reason why they're not allowing it in their country. Right? It's because it's powerful. And this thing is in your hands. Start using it. Amen? 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 to 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work. You know, God doesn't take us so far only to leave us. Every time He takes us somewhere, He will equip you. He will train you. If He's calling you to do something, He will equip you and He will train you. And the first place He will do that through is through the Word of God. Amen. He wants to complete you thoroughly equipped for every good work. He wants you to do good works for Him. Amen. And it, it, it will come into like a place of completion. We're broken people. 
and we live in a broken society, right? And, and how do we serve a broken society? It's only if there is a perfect work that is done in us so that there will be a perfect work that will be done out of our lives as well. It will bring into completion. Get into the Word of God. It's so good. Profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. These are things and benefits you have from the Word of God. Number three, it has the power to bring fullness of joy. You guys still with me? Yes? Okay. It has the power to bring fullness of joy. Can someone say fullness? So it's not just joy, but fullness of joy. Amen? Fullness of joy. What does that mean? What does fullness of joy mean? Let's go into um, Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. It says, your words were found and I ate them. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, we, we eat the word of God, right? And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. You know what makes me really happy? Okay. What, what makes me really simply happy is eating good food. And I know that makes many of you all happy, right? But especially me, I mean, um, as you can tell, right, Rachel Chin is appearing. Rachel Bottom is appearing too. And uh, I like food, right? Uh, I'm someone who likes food, right? And, 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 and it's the most simplest kind of joy. And I like how the Bible puts it. it. It just says, your words are found and I ate them. The Word of God is like food. You got to eat it and it will bring fullness of joy. In Jeremiah chapter 23, it says, Isn't your word like wheat, right? And wheat has feeding qualities. When you eat wheat, you can become full. Uh, when Jesus was in the wilderness, Satan came and tempted him and said, Hey Jesus, since you're so hungry, why don't you turn these stones into bread? After all, you know, you're God, right? And then Jesus says to, to him, Men shall not eat on bread alone but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. See, even Jesus knew that men do not live on bread alone. So he wasn't talking about physical food, but spiritual food. And, and we can become full on eating spiritual food. John 15, 11, These things I've spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. When you carry the Word of God in your life, okay, you, you allow the Word to manifest and remain in you. When that happens, your joy that starts out with just a small seed grows and it grows and it grows and it grows until you become full. Amen? Until you become full. That's what it means to have the fullness of joy. You see, happy, happiness is dependent on happenings. It's dependent on things that are events that are happening. And you're only happy when there's an event like, I don't know, birthday, Christmas, Chinese New Year, Hari Raya, you know, you know, when there's holiday. And when there's no happenings, you're not happy. But what joy is, joy is the undercurrent. Joy is this place, this very still place, undercurrent peace that happens that no matter what's happening on the up outside, even though there's storms, Waves are crashing, things are going nuts, economy is going crazy, you know, people that we love are sick or maybe have died, we're grieving, but there is a joy, an undercurrent that continues to flow in our hearts and in our lives. That's the joy of the Lord. And that can come through the Word of God. Amen. So get into the Word of God. That's where fullness of joy is. It goes beyond happenings. Let's move on. The last one. The power of the word. The power of the word. It has a power to produce faith. It has a power to produce faith. You know, in the Warfare series, Pastor Sebi said, faith is action upon truth. Amen. Faith is action upon truth. That it is not more faith that we actually need. It is more truth that we actually need. Amen. Because, yeah, I mean, the Bible says the, the, the only amount of faith that we need is faith as small as a mustard seed. 
And then out of that faith, as small as the mustard seed, we act upon the truth that we know. Amen. And so it's more truth that we know and and the truth will make us understand how to step out into faith. Amen. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it puts it very clearly here. It says, so then faith comes by hearing. You hear the word of God, you receive faith as small as a mustard seed. And hearing by the word of God. It's still the word of God. It's the foundation of faith. Guys, the great secret to faith is to know the word of God. Woo! We know. The great secret to faith is to know the word of God. Because by knowing the word of God, we come to know his desires. And that's why we are taught to pray when Jesus taught the disciples to pray. Pray like this, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And our role on earth is to declare onto earth what is already said in heaven. That's why we pray and that's why we intercede. And that's the warfare that we wage is in the spiritual realm so that we will declare onto earth what has been declared into heaven. Amen? And so if God says in in heaven that His kingdom come and He wants to do these things, then we declare on earth that this is what He wants to do. Whether it has to do with healing, whether it has to do with government, whether it has to do with the issues of your family or the issues of the nation, ask the Lord what does He declare in heaven. And then our role is to declare on earth. All these things come through the foundation of the Word of God. Come on. That's good, right? I'm going to quickly go into the four functions of the Word. And then I'm going to bring everything into a close, right? Now, the four functions of the Word is this. Number one, it gives us understanding for revelation. I'm going to just go through all of this. Number two, it gives us wisdom to make decisions. Number three, it gives us bullets to pray. I like that. Number four, it gives us truth to step out in faith. All right. So there are four functions of the word. And the first one is it gives us understanding for revelation. And, and, and you know, Cheryl Kins, uh, we have many of ours come from ancestry lines of um, spiritualism, animism, and paganism, right? I mean, my great, great, Grandparents, they were pagans. And so um, there's a line of of spirituality, okay, that we're more inclined to than other people. And so many times we when we pray, we have we see pictures, we see visions, and we have these great revelations that, that not everybody may be in tune to like we are, but for every revelation, God wants to give us understanding. He wants to give us understanding, and that comes through the word of God. Amen. Let's not be flaky Christians, you know, flying in the sky, but no, not grounded in the Word. Know your Word so that the pictures, the images, and the revelations, and the visions that you have, the dreams that you have, will be aligned with truth. Number two, it gives us wisdom to make decisions. We talked about this just now, that the wisdom of heaven is very different from the wisdom of the earth. The wisdom of heaven concerns eternity. The wisdom of the earth is very carnal, You only think about your years on earth, but wisdom higher than wisdom of earth is eternity. How we live in light of eternity, that will reveal your wisdom. Amen. And so every decision we make shouldn't be based on just the amount of years you live on earth. Always in light of eternity. Number three, it gives us bullets to pray. I love that. You know, you may have a gun, you may have all these fancy things going on, but when you have the Word of God, it puts the bullets within the gun and you can, ping, 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 you know, and it'll actually have real effect. Amen. I started this thing myself called Praying with the Word. It was very powerful. You know, we just came together and it was like, okay, guys, today we're just going to pray with Psalms 23. And we went around. Each person just elaborated on every verse. Psalms 23. In the middle of it, we were all like tears, you know, just being refreshed and just being healed from praying with the Word. We just prayed with the Word. It's a very, very powerful tool. Okay, it truly gives you the weapons and the bullets to start shooting at the enemy. It gives you the the healing balm that you can put on, you can put on yourself and any patches, you know. Um, Praying with the Word is powerful. Number four, it gives us truth to step out in faith. And this is where I really want to land this message, all right? You see, 2021, God's going to, God is calling us 
to do great and mighty things for him. Um, he, he, he called us to do that. I mean, this is the beginning of a new era. And in 2020, even though we've been stuck at home and doing lockdown, we've gone to more nations than we've ever gone before. We have people tuning in from, from Wales, from US, from Singapore, many from Singapore, from um, Philippines, all over the world. Amen. We had a word in, in 2019 that we're going to go to nations. Didn't, we didn't know it would be this kind and we would do it this way, right? But God, in all His understanding, we haven't fully fathomed it. You know, we never, never planned to go online, um, to, to do service online this soon. We thought maybe after two years. But God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And we've gone to so many nations and we're doing great things for God. But I know in 2021, He's calling us to do greater Amen. And to step out in faith. And, and, and this is where I'm bringing a close. Because we cannot do faith without doing the Word of God, guys. I'm not going to be one of those, you know, Pentecostal preachers and be like, yeah, go and do this, jump off that, you know, and, 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 and not give you the truth. This is the foundation of everything that we do. It must be. It must be the foundation of everything that we do. We must commit our lives devoted to the Word of God every day. Amen. Just want to encourage and admonish us to do that. I started reading the Bible um, very, very often when I came to the Lord, okay? 2009. And, and, and I was just devouring the Word. I just loved it so much. And, and I started to read the Gospels and how Jesus healed the sick and do all these great things. You know, I started to question, God, can we still see those things happen today? And as I desired to be used by God to prophesy and to heal the sick and all that, you know, God gave me opportunity to do that. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't work, but that doesn't matter. It wasn't up to me to heal anyway. It's all up to God, right? Anyway, I began to pray for the sick. I began to prophesy and, um, and there are some cool stories that happened. I want to share about one that just happened very recently. A few weeks ago, I had applied to buy a software, uh, a Christian software and the Christian software is from the States, United States. And so the person emailed me back and said, okay, let's have a Zoom meeting and I'll explain to you what the software is all about. And so we set the Zoom meeting, we speak to her, and, I'm, and I invited uh, Jeremiah Cho, JC, uh, one of our staff, to join us in this meeting. So it's the three of us over Zoom. She explains to us about how the software works and, and da, da 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 We talk for about 20 minutes. In the midst of her speaking, you know, we, we, our cameras are off, and so I only hear her voice. And there's something about her voice that I just asked. I was nudged by the Holy Spirit, and I stopped, and I said, God, there must be a reason why our lives are entwined, intertwined this morning. If there's anything that you want me to say to her, let me know. And as she's speaking, Isaiah 55 dropped into my heart. My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. At the end of it, she asks us, all right, guys, um, thank you for your time. Do you have any more questions before we say goodbye to one another? And I said, um, let me give her name, Lily, all right? And I said, excuse me, Lily, um, can I just pray for you before we end this call? And she says, okay, sure. You can hear it in her voice, taken aback, right? And so I began to release a word to her, and I said, um, Isaiah 55, the Lord dropped this in my heart, and I gave a specific word to her. That, that she, the things that she's going through and what God wants to do in her life. At the end of the prayer, you know, it was a little bit awkward. She's like, right, thanks so much for your time. And uh, yeah, God bless. I'll email you and we'll get back to you, all right? All right, have a great day, guys. Okay, then, poop, bye, all right? And it was like a bit awkward. I was a bit afraid of what's going to come out of this conversation. <laughs> Um, but you know what? I heard the Lord. I just obeyed. I, 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 I leave everything else to God. You know, a few days later, we get an email. I get an email back from this lady, Lily, right? And this is what the email says. Hey, Rachel, thanks so much for being patient with me while I figure out the pricing for your church. And, da, 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 da. and she says this, lastly, and a little unrelated, I wanted to thank you for praying for me yesterday. Your words meant a lot to me, and I honestly think I was shocked by the accuracy and timing of your prayer. Wow. I'll spare you all the details, but I'm 26 years old and in a season where a lot of my friends and community are in a season of change. Many are getting married, having children, changing careers, etc. 
I've been in a bit of a slump and I feel that many people in my life are evolving and I often feel like I'm a sitting duck. I've been in the same job for about four and a half years and I've been single for most of my life. Two nights ago, I cried to my roommate on my couch two nights before I released this word to her, okay? She said, I cried to my roommate on my couch about all these things and even told her that God never speaks to me and I always just end up making decisions and praying for the best. Anyway, that's probably too much information for you to know about a stranger that lives in Dallas, Texas. But I wanted to make sure I told you that it was just what I needed to hear yesterday. So thank you for being bold and sharing what you felt like God was pushing you to share. It was such an encouragement. Blessings. I read that my heart was filled, filled with the fullness of joy. You know, I don't know what to expect, but when that, I read that um, testimony, I was just so happy that God would use me. It took courage. It took faith on my part. You know, it also took faith on her part to receive it. But that's what I really want to say, that when we have faith, when we have enough truth, God can do miracles through our lives. Amen. The last testimony I want to share real quick is uh, someone in our church. Her name is Phoebe. Okay. Phoebe is a girlfriend. Um, she was a non-believer and she was a girlfriend of someone attending our church, Leslie. All right. And for a long time, Les Leslie has been inviting her to come to church, but she didn't want to. Um, until one day, she, she joined one of our events in Miri Times Square. It was there that she really encountered the power of God, okay? She was, she was supernaturally healed uh, through, through the message and through, um, we, we, we prayed for the sick that, that night and she was supernaturally healed. Anyway, I'm going to show you this video. She, what happened was um, Phoebe had did a testimony video, all right? And she shared her whole story on Facebook and, and she just shared about how cool the story is. Anyway, I'll let you watch it. It's like a three-minute video. Um, go ahead, screen the video. For those of you who know me, you know that I have sprained my foot. I had, I had past perfect times. Right? Seven years ago, it happened, 2013. I have seen doctors. I have gone for physiotherapy. I have um, like dipped my whole right foot into ice bucket. I had taken... I couldn't count anymore how many celebrates. For those of you who know what it celebrates, it's a pen killer. I have seen Chinese doctor where the needle pop, 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 pop the place and then release the blood. Nothing worked. Nothing worked at all. This is where the pressure exit to the ground. And this is where it kills me because the sprained foot happens here. So I have to walk like this. Can you imagine that for two to three years I was walking like... Okay, it was during an Easter service of Miri Cornerstone Church. Okay, during the service, you know, every church service they have press and worship where you need to stand and sit, stand and sit. I was so frustrated to a point that I wish that I could just amputate my whole foot. Somehow, suddenly, during the sermon, Pastor Rachel, who is one of the pastors, she said that she has a vision. She saw a girl limping and God wants to heal her. And then she called, she's like, Please come out, anyone who has a problem with the foot, sprain foot. I was like, <sighs> can you imagine how I feel that time? I was like, nah, there must be some girl that she saw before. And then my two best friends, okay, Tress and Amanda, they went to that service as well. They were looking at each other and signaled. Ah, my two friends straight away dragged me. They're like, go, go, B, must be talking about you. This is your chance to get healed. Like, I scared more people know me la. And then they were like, oh, you Phoebe, are you fine? So there's one of the pastor of the church, Pastor Sabrina, she walked towards me and then she, she said, I'm going to pray for you. Then she squatted down and I was like, first time she prayed, the swelling stopped. I was like, what kind of sorcery is this? Second time she prayed for me, I was like, hmm. I stood, I stood properly with my foot like that. I didn't feel any pain at all can you imagine how shocked i was you think you are shocked enough no i was even shocked because i was the person that getting hit the third time she said that i'm gonna pray for you for complete healing she squatted out again she prayed in a language that i do not understand i did not understand the third time pastor rachel led me to walk a short distance in front of everybody i walk with no problem 
no limping bandage off can you imagine how i felt on the spot it's like my whole belief system got overturned and why the miracle happened on me why why heal me like i never acknowledge you in my life no matter how many times that my fiance and my or my friends talk to me about you i don't care like i never ask anything from you nor do i ever talk to you about anything in my life right like, and then i never think about jesus and then yet he chose to heal me i was so happy like i felt so loved why do i feel love it's because Jesus never asked anything from me. Neither do neither did I offer anything to him. Neither did I ever acknowledge or talk to him. But yet he chose to give me freedom. What kind of freedom? Freedom from the pain that I no longer have to suffer by his grace. And I give all the credits to God. All glory to you, my Lord Jesus. Thank you for healing me. Amen. How cool was that video? Come on, let's give God just, let's just say thank you to God for healing Phoebe. You know, I just, just thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for Phoebe's life. I thank you, God, that you healed her. And I thank you that you are more than capable of healing many more people like her, even as she said that she was healed and she wants many more to be healed like her. I pray, God, that through this testimony and through this video, God, that many will know what it's like to receive healing physically and also from the heart, uh, healing in the heart, Father. And we pray, God, for many, many more people to know you just as Phoebe has known you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Man, I really love that story about how uh, Phoebe got healed in her, in her leg. And you know, Phoebe is now in our church. She is actively in church. She's part of a cell group. The, the whole church is, is, is helping her and getting ready for her wedding that's happening in a few weeks' time. Okay, and, uh, and it's just amazing um, the season that Phoebe and Leslie are entering into. Guys, there is an adventure waiting for you and for me to enter into. 2021 is just around the corner. But let's get into the Word. Not just once, not just for a season, but every day of our lives, I plead you. Amen. I'm just going to close with two very quick things, a very practical way on how to learn the Word of God. Number one, join a Bible study or join a cell group. All right? At the end of this, there are going to be announcements and and scan the QR code so that you, if you want to be part of a cell group, fill in the Google form, be part of a cell group. Um, you will learn the Word of God there. You'll have a community of believers. Now, if you don't have a cell group yet, or maybe you don't feel like you want to be part of this big, young adults, crazy, loud cell group, start a Bible study group, all right? If you want to start a Bible study group and you don't know how to, PM us, DM us, fill out the Google form, you know, we will have people in the church that will, that will help you, okay? This is, this is part of what we enjoy doing, is to raise up mature believers. If that's something you want to do, we can help you, we can teach you how to start a Bible study group and how you could do it with a small group as well, amen? Number two is this, you got to set an appointment with God, okay? Very practical, how to get into the Word of God. Set an appointment with God just as you set an appointment with your friend, Amen? And just like you say to your friend, hey, let's meet Tuesday, 9 a.m., let's have breakfast together, meet the Lord, whatever time that is, and don't cancel it unless something really big is happening. But if not, make sure you don't cancel it. Just as you don't cancel things with your friends unless there's a big change in your calendar, don't cancel your time with the Lord. If you don't make an appointment with the Lord, I promise you, you will not meet Him. You will not read your Bible. Have breakfast with Jesus. It's the best thing on earth. When you have breakfast with Jesus, you can carry your conversation with Jesus throughout the day. Amen? Amen. Make an appointment with Jesus. Guys, I've come to the end of my message. Um, it's very simple, like I said. Very foundational. But I know not many of us are really living in it daily. And this morning, I just want to encourage us would you just stand up? Let's, let's respond to the word wherever you are. If you're alone in your room, just stand up. If you're driving, please drive to the side. 
Don't close your eyes while you're driving. All right. I want to pray for us. It's just desire for the Word of God. Amen. Every eyes closed, every head bow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just put your hand on your heart. In the name of Jesus. Father, I just pray for such a, a desire to get into your Word. Such a deep desire to learn your Word. Such a deep desire to study your Word, God. Not just surface, not just enough to get through the day, but really learn and study your Word. I pray, God, that we will be strong and mature believers. That even as you're calling us to fight battles in the spiritual, Lord, you would equip us. Equip us through the Word. Equip us, strengthen us in character in all your truth and in all your wisdom and in all your revelation. Father, nudge us at times that we missed out, at times that we forgot. Lord, I pray that we will not be dependent upon others to read the word, but we will make an appointment with you and we'll keep those appointments with you for all the day of, days of our lives, God, not just for a season, but every day of our life. Father, I thank you for the calling for every person that's tuning in. I thank you for the adventure you're calling us into, especially in 2021, Lord. I pray that even as we say yes to you, to do your work and to live out for you, take us deep in your word, give us revelation, that we will walk in line and in step with you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Guys, um, I hope you've been blessed by the word. We're going to go straight into Holy Communion right now. If you have your communion elements, could you just prepare it? For those who are in families, I'm just going to give you a bit of time to pass around the communion elements. And let's just prepare our hearts to partake of it together. Thank you, Lord. What can wash away my sins nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow oh, no other found i know nothing but the blood of jesus yes lord father this morning we approach the table by faith and we appropriate by faith all that you've accomplished on the cross. We thank you for these elements of the bread which represents your broken body. Thank you for this cup which represents your blood which was shed for the redemption of all. We ask that you bless these elements even as we partake of it this morning. Let's partake of the bread together. Let's partake of the cup together. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, even as we have partaken of the bread and the cup and come into union with you, Father, we ask, open our eyes to see, open our hearts to understand more and more of you and to become one with you, Father. We pray for every physical body that is sick, Lord, in Jesus' name. Every ankle, um, sprained ankle, sprained feet, whatever is happening in the leg or the knee area, we ask for healing in Jesus' name, complete healing in Jesus' name. For every migraine, every headache, we ask for healing in Jesus' name. We thank you that by your stripes, by your blood, we are healed and healed indeed. And we claim that word of God even right now, God, wherever they are physical healing in 
Jesus name thank you Jesus father we thank you that they are already healed we thank you that they're already healed father and so Lord we pray um, for for those who are sick also in the heart God in the soul bring healing to that Lord in the spiritual bring healing to that Lord we thank you for your wholeness through the bread and through the cup we love you in Jesus name we pray amen And so may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, may He cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you, and may He lift up His countenance upon you and grant you His peace. May God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and abide in you now until forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Amen, Amen, and Amen. Alright guys, have a great week. Thank you for tuning in. Cornerstone Borneo, God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Rachel, for the great message today. We trust that you have been blessed by the word. Now we're going to roll through a few announcements. First, if you have not already followed us on social media, do check us out on our Facebook, Instagram, YouTube channel, and also our website at www.myycscc.com. Follow us, like us, and stay updated with what is happening here in Cornerstone Borneo. If you like to give towards your tithe and offering, as God has given us so much and freely, let us also be a cheerful giver unto Him. What you need to do is very simple. You just need to click on the link below or use your phone and scan a QR code and it will bring you to our church bank details. Next stop, this is an important announcement. Church-wide prayer meeting is happening this coming Friday on the 18th of December. And this is going to be the last prayer meeting corporately as a church for this year. So do join us this Friday at 7.30 p.m. The Zoom link will be sent out to your respective cell group chats. Hey Ewan, do you know it's December already? Already? Guess what's coming up next? Hmm, Christmas? Yes, it's Christmas. This year, we'll be celebrating Christmas service during the Christmas day itself on December 25th at 10 a.m. However, due to the COVID situation, we will not be able to meet uh, as a congregation in Miri. So we'll be meeting up at different locations across Miri. But for those of you who are in Kuching, you guys are so blessed that you'll be meeting together in church hall because it can accommodate all of you there. You know what? We're going to also receive a goodie bag if we come to the service. Yeah, so what are you waiting for? Invite your friends, invite your family, come together and celebrate this special day together. And we're going to roll out and give much more information regarding this service for the next few weeks. Stay tuned with your cell group chat. That's wonderful. Last announcement. Connect with us. If you're new with us and you would like to know more about Christianity, or if you want to connect with us for prayer or counselling, do scan the QR code below or click on the link and one of us from Cornerstone Borneo will get in touch with you. Okay, I think that's it for the announcements. Have a blessed week ahead and we will see you next, next weekend. weekend.